Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. We are in the living room working today. I have a jacket on because I was just outside and it is snowing, which is crazy. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. There it is, coming down. I've been trimming the trees down here, trying to get some more yard space. So that is why it's a mess back there. But our job for today is to work on this wall right here. We're gonna take it down and we're gonna replace it with an actual wall because we're making this a duplex. We're gonna have an upper unit and a bottom unit. And so in order to do that, we need to separate them and we're going to put a wall here and across here with a door and then we're gonna put a door at the bottom of the steps, making this a common area and then uh, we can seal it off. Put an electrical outlet in there for a TV or whatever you want there. <sighs> It'll be great. But in order to do the flooring in here, um, I need to know where the wall is gonna be. That way I can take the flooring up to the wall. So we're gonna tear that down, build the wall. But first, I forgot to tell you, do you notice anything different about that? You know anything, you notice anything different about the walls and ceilings in here? They're painted, except for, I mean, they haven't trimmed around it. And we haven't taken down the blinds yet because they are uh, our only privacy at nighttime because it's kind of a fishbowl with that open. So anyways, we got the walls painted, we got some trim painted, and we got the ceilings painted both in here and in the hallway. We still haven't finished everything, but enough to where we can put the flooring down. So anyways, let's get started with tearing that wall down. wondering what the uh, carpet is for over there that was a baby gate so our new puppy doesn't fall through hey guys meet copper he's a little sick he's got some puppy strangles but we're working with him to make him feel better so anyways let's keep working here Surprisingly easy. And now that it's taken down, we can mark for the new walls. We just have to figure out how wide of a door we want to put there, or how wide of a door we can put there, and mark it all out and then get it framed up. So let's do that now. So I'm in the middle of trying to figure out exactly where I want the walls to be. And I figured out where I want this wall to be because I want it to line up with this wall right here. But I wanted to share with you how to mark out where you want your studs to go. So if you've ever heard someone say 16 on center, what they mean is, is that 16 inches is the average stud spacing usually. So you're gonna hook your tape on the end and then you're gonna go over to 16 inches that is the center of your stud. So your stud is an inch and a half wide. So you want to subtract the half of that stud, which is three quarters of an inch, if I haven't lost you. So you subtract three quarters of an inch from 16, and that'll give you 15 and a quarter. You make a mark there, and then you put your X on the side that you subtracted from, and that will give you 16 on center. And so the reason you want to do 16 on center is because if you're using like drywall or something like that to sheet your wall with, or any lumber, it usually comes in two foot increments. So two foot, four foot, six foot, eight foot. Usually they start out at eight feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, but on drywall, they come four feet by eight feet. And so you want that drywall to split on a stud. And so if you just measure 16 inches over and make a mark, you're gonna miss it because your drywall will just be floating. So you subtract that three quarters of an inch to make sure that your center of your stud 
is where your drywall is going to end. And I might explain that more later on when we actually do the drywall work and see and show you why it's so important. But so we measure over 15 and a quarter for the first one. And then the second one, you just go to 32, subtract three quarters, so 31 and a quarter. Next one, you go to 48, subtract three quarters, 47 and a quarter. And I'll give you 16 on center from each one. And then once you make the mark and you put the X on which side you want the stud to go on, that's how you mark a stud as an X. You can take your speed square, which is what this thing is called. You can put it on the line. Now this is the bottom plate and this is the top plate. They're the same exact length because they're the same wall. This is the bottom plate and the top plate goes on top and then you put your studs in between. And so to save some time, you can take your bottom plate and top plate, put them next to each other before you nail them together. Put your speed square right on the line, and then you can mark across both of them. That way you only have to measure one stud, or one top plate or bottom plate, whichever one you wanna measure first. And then you can just use that mark, put an X, come over here, put on the line that you marked, put an X. So these are exactly the same. You can do that all the way down. So that's how you mark 16 on center. Since we're framing a wall in a house that is already built, so existing framing, we're adding a wall. So on a, a new construction house, you build the walls in the ground, you raise them up in place, and then you nail them. So it's really easy. But since there's a roof already above this wall, I'm going to build this wall underneath of it instead of raising it up. Because of my popcorn ceilings, if I do it nice and tight like I want to, it's gonna mess up the texture on the ceiling. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the top plate that I've marked and put it on top of my bottom plate and then when I measure from this to the ceiling, it'll tell you the exact measurement that you need. Now you can do this and this measure from the ceiling to the ground, but if you do that, then you have to subtract three. So if you just three inches, of course, because there's an inch and a half, inch and a half. So if you stack them up, you don't have to do any math. You just stick it on there, measure from the ceiling to the floor or from floor to the ceiling, and you'll get your measurement. And then you can stand your studs up and I'll show you how to install them in a little jiffy. So I got the wall mostly framed up. You can see all the studs are already up, but I'm gonna show you how to put this one in and hopefully you can hear me all the way over there. Just put a splinter in my finger. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna set it on the line down here and then I'm going to put it over. And this one is just a, just a touch short, so it's not gonna hold itself very well, which is fine. So I'll take my nailer and tap it to the line down here. Shoot it at an angle here. And then put it on the line up here. Or close to it and we'll nail it. Just like so. Now you're kind of nailing it like at a 45 degree angle, so you're wanting it to penetrate the stud and go into the uh, the board on top or the board on bottom, whichever one you're nailing into, uh, as much as possible. So you kind of want to split the difference and make it fit nice and tight. And then you can take your hammer and pound the nails the rest of the way in if they don't go in all the way and adjust the boards to the lines. Our plan is to have this wall kind of as a privacy wall between the stairs and here. And so it's going to be an insulated wall just for sound, not for cold or hot necessarily, but for, so we'll put some insulation in it later. But uh, as you'll see down here, I wanted to point out that we left the wall a half an inch away from the top of this wall. That way when we stick our drywall in, it's gonna dead end right here. And then we can seam it right here. That way this wall looks very continuous and you won't even know that it wasn't an original wall. Uh, some things you're going to want to make sure you do is make sure that your bottom plate and your top plate are perfectly level to each other. So once you get the first stud put in, you can stick your level on there and your line, it should be right between the bubbles, just like that. I'll have to see with the light. But once you get them all up there, they should all look straight. You should be able to look down it and not see it leaning one way or the other. See how these are all perfect. That's how we want it. And so now our dilemma is, is that we want a door that's wide enough to carry something through. Uh, and the only door that we can get to fit in this area is like a 30 inch door uh, because the staircase is only about 31 inches wide or so. So it's not a big deal because we can carry 
furniture through the back door. A little copper snooze in there. Getting, trying to heal up, I think. Uh, but we're going to, uh, so we're going to make the door wider. We're going to make it a 32 inch door and we're going to bump out this wall right here to this line. That's the plan at least. We'll see if we stick to it. That way uh, we can put a bigger door in here um, and it's going to open up into the hallway. And the only thing different out here, we'll have a little bump out, which will be fine because we're going to be putting a TV probably on that wall anyways. And I'll kind of give it a kind of a little alcove there. So that's the plan. So let's frame these walls. Well, we stuck to the plan and this is what we've got. So we've got a 32 inch door, which is nice. So rough opening of almost 36 inches uh, because you got to accommodate for the sides of the door. Uh, but anyways, the header is sufficient for a non-bearing, load-bearing wall, but I would have beefed it up more, except for I didn't have any more material. I only had these little small pieces left, and so we're going to have to buy some more anyways. But this is my thought pattern between uh, all the thinking I've come up with, is we needed a door that was bigger, like I said, and so we bumped this wall out almost the full stud width out, and then we sewed it together with some 2 by 4s there. We're going to put it in the back of board right here and right here for the drywall to come across, but that will be no big deal to add later, uh, but looks pretty sweet. Nice and solid, nice and plumb level, all that jazz. Looking pretty good. So I am happy with it. Next thing I wanna do is to install some drywall on this wall, uh, but I'm going to wait until I get my drywall um, square so I can cut things nicely. Not necessary, but I want to wait and so we'll probably actually start doing some flooring. So let's, let's do that in this video too. Okay, so if you fast forward a few days, uh, just tomorrow for since yesterday basically, but here's the flooring. We've got it done all the way up to this point right here. And then we have finished the wall, of course. And so since the wall is finished framed, we got the floor up to this point. We had to run out of flooring uh, and we had to go buy some more and we went to four different Home Depots. They all said they had it, but only the last one did. And so we bought everything they had, which is should be enough or more than enough to finish. And then we got it stacked right there. So we can go down the hallway and into the dining room and kitchen and bathroom. But now, since I've kind of run out of room to work, I'm going to hang some drywall on that wall. So that's up next. So let's get to it. Okay, it is officially 10 o'clock on the eve of Thanksgiving. Uh, and so we are getting some stuff done. You have to work late to get some stuff done sometimes, but let me turn you around and show you what we've got going on. I've maybe done a few things off camera, like finish the drywall, adding more flooring up to this point. The reason I haven't continued down the hall is because I'm gonna have to go, this piece is gonna have to go inside of there and then go that way a tiny bit. And I just don't wanna deal with that tonight since it's getting later. But I want to share with you the drywall. I still have to put the screws in it. I've only put enough in there to hold it because uh, I have a cordless drywall screw gun and it's a lot of fun to use. Um, and the screws I'm using there are a little bit too long. So I want to use the shorter screws that are proper, but those are just hold in place for now. But these sheets are eight feet long by four feet tall. So we got two of those there, but since they come short, we had to add a piece on the end. Now you don't normally want to have a seam from top to bottom. You usually want to stagger your seams, but since this is so close to the corner, uh, it's not a big deal. But the funny thing is, is I took this piece and had to cut it down because the ceiling isn't quite eight feet tall. And so the off cut, which was about four and a half inches from that, was able to fit here. And the excess 
was perfect for this side over here. And then the only scraps we had left was that little pile right there, which is incredible. So we got the rest of fit uh, there. And then the face of it is drywall as well, which is kind of cool because this kind of shows you what the apartment's going to look like, the upper unit, which we'll probably call unit A. Uh, and then down here, down the stairs, looks pretty sweet because we've got it vacuumed and cleaned up. And uh, we're going to insulate this wall because uh, we want to insulate it for sound, uh, but then we'll drywall it later. But this area I can do on the way down to downstairs, but we'll get the upstairs finished first and then we'll keep going. Got some vents covered there. We still have a lot of painting and touch, touch up to do and then we'll put quarter round around the base because this trim is all the, all the way down to the ground. But it's looking pretty snazzy and I'm excited. So we're gonna get a little bit more done tonight just by cleaning up. We moved all the flooring over here and stack a little tools, vacuum, clean everything. My wife's in the kitchen making stuff for Thanksgiving tomorrow, so that's exciting. Uh, but anyways, thank you all for watching. That's gonna be the end of our video today, but don't forget to look in the descriptions below. Uh, don't forget to sign up for your free stocks with uh, Robinhood and Acorns if you want to. Uh, and then uh, don't forget to leave a comment saying which number of subscriber you are and all that jazz. But anyways, we'll catch you later. God bless. And happy Thanksgiving to you. We'll see you later.